It feels like there's just endless content in Stardew Valley. How are we ever gonna know all of it? Well today I'm going to attempt to put a little dent in that by going over everything you need to know about the rings in Stardew Valley. Now if you've seen my 7 part short series on every ring in Stardew Valley, you may feel that a bit of this information is a little repetitive, but don't worry, that's just a small portion of this video and there's a lot more info than just what's been included in the short series. Yes, we will be going over every ring in Stardew Valley, how you can obtain them and what they do, but we'll also be going over a bit of a ring evaluation, which rings are the best, slash my personal favorites, as well as an introduction to the forge and how merging rings works, standout ring combinations, and the rings and combos I personally use when I play Stardew myself. Now before we fully dive in, I just want to go over a few of the basics that you might not know if you're new to the game. In Stardew, rings are classified as clothing items that will give you a passive benefit when worn. In your inventory menu, you'll be able to equip up to two rings in these slots, which is why you'll find how valuable it is to be able to combine rings and have even more power, but we'll get into that a bit later. You can also sell any rings back to Marlin at the Adventurer's Guild, or store any extra rings that you're not using in a dresser to preserve space in your chests. Now that you've got the basics down, great job, let's get into every ring in Stardew Valley. First up is a classic, the Small Glow Ring. This ring emits a 5 radius of light, and this effect will stack with other glow rings. You can obtain it as a monster drop from Slimes in the Mines. Wow, that rhymes. Oh, and another rhyme. Okay, sorry. <laughs> slimes in the Mines before floor 40 through a fishing treasure chest, or as a reward for completing the night fishing bundle in the community center. This ring sells for 50 Gs. Not bad. Next up is the upgrade to the small glow ring, the glow ring. Just like the small glow ring, its effect is to emit light, however, this ring is two times as effective as it emits a 10 radius of light opposed to the 5 from the small glow ring. It also is able to stack with other glow rings, and you can find this one as a monster drop from slimes after floor 40 in the mines, through slaying a skeleton in the mines between floors 70 and 79, or by destroying boxes and barrels in the mines. Again, going back to how it's double as effective as the small glow ring, that translates to its sell price as well as it sells for 100 gold double from the 50 of the previous ring. Keeping with the classics, our next ring is called the Small Magnet Ring, and it does just that. In more specific terms, it increases your magnetism by one tile and has the ability to stack with itself, the normal magnet ring, and the iridium band, which we'll go over in a few minutes. You can obtain this one as a reward for completing the Adventurer's Bundle in the Community Center, in fishing treasure chests, or through destroying boxes and barrels in the mines. Just like the small glow ring, it sells for 50G. Surprise, surprise, there's a similar upgrade to the small magnet ring, the magnet ring. It doubles your magnetism from the small magnet ring, increasing it to two tiles and stacks in the same way as well. You'll find it through enemy drops in the mines between floors 40 through 79, as well as through destroying boxes and barrels in the mines. Again, just like the glow rings, its sell price doubles from the smaller version to 100G. Now if you're thinking that these rings sound great so far, you might be interested in this next one, the glowstone ring. It's a perfect combination of the glow and magnet rings as it emits a 10 radius of light while also increasing your magnetism by two tiles. All you need to do is bring your mining level up to 4 and then you'll be able to craft this guy with 5 solar essence and 5 iron bars. It does only sell for 100 gold, which is something you'll begin to see as a pattern for a lot of the rings. Next up is the ruby ring. Its power is very easy to understand as it simply increases your attack by 10%. You can purchase it at the Adventurer's Guild for 5,000 after reaching floor 80 in the mines or through fishing treasure chests. Now, be sure to only buy this one if it's one you really want, as you're only going to get a small portion of your investment back as it only sells for 300. Okay, it might feel like I'm jumping around, but I swear it will all make sense, okay? The next ring is the Iridium Band, and it's potentially one of the best rings in the game as it combines all of the basics that we've gone over with the previous rings so far. It glows, attracts items, and has the 10% increased attack damage. So yes, it's a combo of the Glow Magnet and the Ruby Rings. You can find this one through a fishing treasure chest if you're lucky, or you'll be able to craft one for yourself after reaching combat level 9 with 5 Iridium Bars, 50 Solar Essence, and 50 Void Essence. It sells for 1000. Next up is the Warrior Ring. Occasionally, it will give you the power of the Warrior, which basically just means that you'll have a chance at getting the Warrior Energy buff after slaying a monster, a plus 10 attack. If that interests you, you'll need to be at a combat level 4 to craft it with 10 Iron Bars, 25 Coal, and 10 Frozen Tears. It sells for 750. If you're familiar with religious affiliations in Stardew, you may understand this next ring a bit, the Ring of Yoba. When wearing this one, you'll have a chance of being blessed by Yoba in a sense by occasionally being shielded by damage. The lower your health and the higher your luck, the more chance you'll be receiving this buff. You'll be able to craft this one at combat level 7, but Yoba's blessing isn't free as you'll be using 5 iron bars, 5 gold bars, and a diamond. It sells for 750 Gs. 
If you're a little newer to the game, you might want to go for the Sturdy Ring. It cuts the duration of negative buffs in half, so if you've been slimed, for example, the negative force speed that will affect you will only be in effect for about a second or so. It's also easy to obtain, as you'll be able to craft this one fairly quickly at level 1 combat with 2 copper bars, 25 bug meat, and 25 slime. All things you'll likely be encountering early on as you venture into the mines. This ring sells for 750, and I was kind of curious when seeing the sell price how much all of the individual crafting items would sell for because in my mind I was thinking that that was a fairly high sell price in comparison to those materials, and I was actually right. If you were to sell the copper bars, the bug meat, and the slime, you would only be making 445 to 505 with the blacksmith profession, so with 750, you're actually making a profit. Now, is this a great way to make money? Probably not, but it was kind of an interesting thing to realize. Okay, so we're gonna speed things up for the next view. The Amethyst Ring is next, and it increases your knockback by 10%, and can be purchased from the Adventurer's Guild for 1000 after completing the Initiation Quest, which is completed by slaying 10 slimes after reaching floor 10 in the mines. You can also find one through a fishing treasure chest, and it's sold for 100G. The Topaz Ring increases your weapon precision by 10%, aka it decreases the chance that a hit will cause no damage. And you can also purchase it from the Adventurer's Guild for 1000 after completing the Initiation Quest or through Fishing Treasure Chests. It sells for 100 Gs. The Aquamarine Ring increases your critical strike chance by 10% and can be purchased from the Adventurer's Guild for 2500 after reaching floor 40 in the mines or can be found in a Fishing Treasure Chest and is sold for 200. Similarly, the Jade Ring increases your critical strike power by 10% and can be purchased from the Adventurer's Guild for 2500 after reaching floor 40 in the mines or can also be found in fishing treasure chests and is also sold for 200. The Emerald Ring increases your weapon speed by 10% and is obtained in the same way as the Aquamarine Ring and the Jade Ring while also selling for 200. Up next is the Thorns Ring. When enemies damage you, this ring will play the Unu Reverse card and the enemy will take that same damage themselves. Love that. You'll be able to craft this one at combat level 7 with 50 bone fragments, 50 stone, and 1 gold bar. Unfortunately, it only sells for 100. One of the cuter rings in the bunch, the Lucky Ring, is next. Just as it sounds, this ring will increase your luck by 1. Somewhat unfortunately, you're gonna have to start out with some luck to find this guy as it's dropped as a special item in the Skull Cavern or rarely by panning. It sells for 100. This next ring is definitely a fan favorite, the Hot Java Ring. It greatly increases your chances to find coffee drinks when slaying monsters, so you have the chance of getting both coffee or triple shot espresso for free basically. Who doesn't want that? Unfortunately for some, it can only be found in chests in the Volcano Dungeon on Ginger Island and sells for a whopping 100 Gs. The Protection Ring increases your invincibility time after taking damage by 0.4 seconds. It is found in chests in the Volcano Dungeon, a pattern we'll see for the next few rings, and it sells for 100 G. The Soul Sapper Ring is next, and it does just that. As you slay monsters, you'll find yourself sapping the soul out of them and gaining 4 energy yourself. It can be found in chests in the Volcano Dungeon and sells for 100. The Phoenix Ring is another very aesthetically pleasing ring and has a very unique power that only goes into effect once a day. After being knocked out in combat while wearing this ring, your health will be restored to 50% instead of actually passing out. Surprise, surprise, you can find this one in the Volcano Dungeon chests and it can be sold for 100. Just as the name suggests, the immunity band increases your immunity by 4. What this means is that for each point of immunity, you are less likely to be debuffed by 10%. It can be found as a special item in both the Skull Cavern and over floor 100 in the local mines. It sells for 250G. If you ever married an NPC in Stardew, you may be confused why you haven't exchanged something like this wedding ring here. However, this ring is not used between a player and an NPC to get married. Rather, it is given to another farmer in a multiplayer file to ask their hand in marriage. You can purchase the crafting recipe from the traveling cart for 500 and then you can handcraft this ring with 5 iridium bars and a prismatic shard. Definitely made with love. Now, this ring doesn't have any other effect attached other than the ability to marry somebody, so that is a bit of a letdown. And although it's crafted with very valuable items, it only sells for 1000G. This next ring is definitely one of the most unique, as it's the only ring in the game that is actually unobtainable. It's called the Jukebox Ring, and it's described as playing a random assortment of music you've heard, but it also explains that the effect is unknown. Weird. You won't be able to find this one as it is unobtainable, but it does sell for 100, so there's that. I've saved these final 6 rings for last as they are all obtained as rewards through the Adventurer's Guild's Monster Eradication Goals. Your progress for these can be tracked through the bulletin board here, and once completed you can retrieve your reward from Gil. By slaying 1000 slimes, you'll receive the Slime Charmer Ring. 
When worn, it prevents slimes from doing damage to you and prevents the slimed buff. After receiving it from Gil, you can purchase any additional slime charmer rings for 25,000 and it sells for 350. For eradicating 150 void spirits, aka the shadow guys you'll see once you're deeper in the local mines, you'll receive the savage ring which gives you a 3 second speed buff after slaying a monster. After getting it as a reward, you'll be able to purchase another for 25k or sell it for 750. The vampire ring is a bit of a fan favorite from what I've seen and you'll receive it after eradicating 200 bats. What makes this one special is that every time you slay a monster, you'll be rewarded with 2 health. After earning this one, you'll be able to purchase it for 15 grand or sell it for 750. If you're able to manage slaying 500 of these death sprites, you'll be able to get your hands on the burglar's ring. This one is fun as it increases the chance of monsters dropping loot. What this means is that the game rolls twice on the monster's drop table so items have a chance to drop twice. After receiving this one, you'll be able to buy any additional burglar's rings for 20,000 or sell it for 750. The crab shell ring can be obtained by eradicating 60 rock crabs so it's potentially a little less overwhelming than some of these other goals. It increases your defense by 5 and after obtaining it, you can purchase it for 15,000 or sell it for 1,000. Saving the best for last, we have the napalm ring. If you're not a fan of the serpents in the skull cavern, you're not gonna like what I'm about to say. This ring is rewarded for slaying 200 serpents. Yes, 200. But to me, it is all worth it because when slaying a monster with this ring equipped, the enemy will explode, destroying objects and damaging enemies nearby. But don't worry, you will stay unharmed. It's a great one when making your way through the skull cavern so that you won't be wasting bombs. This ring is also the priciest if you want to buy any additional napalm rings coming in at 30,000. It also sells for 1,000. Wow, okay. That was a lot. Now that we've gone through every ring in Stardew Valley, let's highlight some of the standouts. The best starter ring goes to the small glow ring. This one is a great one to have early on and you're super likely to find it early on as well. Even if you're not a huge fan of combat, this ring comes in clutch as you walk around the valley during the later hours of the day, especially if you're somebody who gets stressed that you won't make it home in time. I feel like this one can really help calm some of that anxiety. The award for the most aesthetically pleasing ring goes to... The Lucky Ring. The simple design and the cute lunar emblem elevate this ring in terms of appearance. For the silly but useful award, we have the Hot Java Ring. Who knew that there would be a ring that gave you your morning pick-me-up? What a silly UVI. The award for the most useless ring goes to the Jukebox Ring because, well, it's literally unobtainable. I just don't see many people getting much use out of a ring that they cannot have. So there, there's that. And lastly, our award for the most overall well-rounded ring goes to the Iridium Band. Combining light, magnetism, and attack definitely awards this one a truly well-rounded ring. Now, my personal rings are as follows, and if you're following along, I'd love to see your top rings in the comments. Okay, we're gonna do this dance bomb style, so it's time to make a pyramid. At the bottom, we have the Thorns Ring. Good, waiting for it to be great. Next, the Hot Java Ring. Didn't stick out to me. Next, the Iridium Band. Next, the Burglar's Ring. Third on the Pyramid, third overall high score. And Slime Charmer Ring. And on top of the Pyramid, going three for three, once again, is the Napalm Ring. So now we face the dilemma of a lifetime. How do we choose which two rings to equip when we have 30 rings to choose from? Well, this is where the forge comes into play. The forge is found on Ginger Island after reaching the 10th and final floor of the Volcano Dungeon. A lot of different fun things happen here. You can take a look at my short form content to get a better idea, but today we're focusing on how the forge allows you to combine rings, allowing you to have the power of four rings equipped. Two different rings can be combined into one with stacked effects. You're able to do this by placing two rings you'd like to combine into the empty slots, costing 20 cinder shards. Now combining rings has two restrictions. The first is that you're not able to combine two of the same ring, so you couldn't be putting two iridium bands to further stack the effects into one. But that being said, you can combine rings that have overlapping effects. For example, the iridium band and a glowstone ring both have magnetism and are able to glow, but you are able to combine these rings and their effects will stack. The second restriction is that three or more rings cannot be combined into one. This also means that once you've combined two rings, you can't further combine it. So you won't be creating a mega ring of combined rings if that makes sense. When rings are combined, you may be wondering what kind of appearance the ring will take on. Every ring combination actually ends up taking on the appearance of what looks like a variation of the Iridium Band, just with different colors. 
This is a little unfortunate in some ways. For example, somebody asked me a while back if when combining the wedding ring, which we know has no effect other than the ability to ask another player's hand in marriage with another ring, could it keep the appearance of the actual wedding ring while taking on the power of another? And the answer is no. When combining the wedding ring with another ring, it does transform into an Iridium band looking variation, so do keep that in mind. So what happens if you combine the wrong two rings or you just find that after using the combination you've created it really isn't working for you? Maybe you combine two rings because you didn't have a different ring to combine at the time but now you do and you're wondering, what now? Did I just waste my rings? Well, the short answer is no, you didn't because you do have the ability to unforge your combined rings and split them back into two separate original rings. To begin the unforging process, pop your combined rings into this slot here and then click the red X symbol near the bottom corner and the original rings will appear in your inventory along with any returned cinder shards. Now although unforging is free and doesn't cost anything, be aware that you will only get some of the cinder shards you originally put into the combined rings back. So now that we know all the ins and outs of the forge, I wanted to go into a few different ring combos that you might want to consider and then I'll share some of my personal combinations that I use and why. We're going to start out with a combo for those who struggle with combat and need a little protection when going up against monsters. Combining the protection ring and the crab shell ring will allow you to continually take hits while increasing your defense and staying invincible after a hit for much longer. On the opposite side of the spectrum, if you're somebody who does enjoy combat and wants to be buffed as you do so, the combination of the soul sapper ring and the vampire ring might be for you. With these two rings combined, you'll be able to gain both energy and health as you attack and slay enemies nearby. On a lighter note, if you're somebody who likes being speedy and can't get enough coffee products, the Burglar's Ring and the Hot Java Ring will be the perfect combo for you as they'll feed into each other. The Hot Java Ring will be increasing your chance for monsters to drop coffee products, while the Burglar's Ring will be adding to that by creating a chance for the coffee products to drop twice. So much coffee. <laughs> In the same vein of rings feeding into each other, the Ring of Yoba combined with the Lucky Ring is another combo you may want to consider. The Ring of Yoba has the chance to occasionally shield the wearer from damage, and this chance is heightened by the amount of luck you have. Now, all of these are fun, but you also can't go wrong with combining the Iridium Band with literally any other ring. The Iridium Band provides a great base with its power to create light, magnetism, and some increased attack, so you really can't go wrong there. And with that being said, I wanted to share my personal go-to ring combinations that I use in my own save files. Tried, true, and test- true- tried, true, and tested? Something like that. <laughs> the first goes along the lines of the Iridium Band with literally anything, but with a little more direction. I like to equip the Iridium Band with the Slime Charmer Ring, and I keep this ring combo equipped at all times. These are just two basics that I feel like are just a great base to have. My second favorite ring combo to go along with the base, as I've called it, is the Burglar's Ring and the Napalm Ring. I'm a big fan of loot and I do enjoy combat quite a bit in Stardew, so for me these two rings really bring the best of both worlds. While fighting monsters, I can avoid having to mine rocks or use bombs to find staircases, as the ring's power kind of does the work for me while also encouraging me to be fighting monsters, which will then result in slaying more monsters, hence more chances for them to drop double loot. Yay. I know this combo may not be for everybody, but I do love it. So that's pretty much it. If you feel like you've learned something, I'd love if you would like the video and subscribe to see more videos like this and just more Stardew content in general. And don't forget to let me know what rings stood out to you most and what ring combination you'd make. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you very soon. Goodbye.